understanding special relativity. How could reality be so strange? How can it be that time and space can flex and bend so radically from one person's view to another's? Actually, it all makes perfect sense, once we understand what time really is. Space-time When an object, say a 100-meter-long rocket, is accelerated to 60% of the speed of light, its length decreases to 80% of its length when at rest. An object's length at rest is known as its proper length. But this formerly 100-meter rocket, at this speed is just 80 meters long. What happens to its extra length? Where does it go? A pencil on your desk can use all of its length to reach through the east-west dimension. But if you rotate it, it can use 80% of its length to reach across the east-west dimension, and 60% of its length to reach across the north-south dimension. The formula describing rotation and lengths of this pencil is the same math for calculating length contraction in special relativity. Length contraction is an effect of rotation. It is analogous to tilting an umbrella formally pointed straight at the sun, its shadow contracts along the direction the umbrella is tilted. Spacetime and length contraction. Likewise, the three-dimensional shadow or projection of an object rotated in four-dimensional space contracts. But what could this extra fourth dimension be that objects rotate in? According to relativity, it's time. A rocket at rest, like the horizontal pencil, uses its entire length to reach through space and none of its length to reach through time. An accelerated rocket, on the other hand, has a different direction through spacetime. It is rotated and only uses some of its proper length to reach across space. The phenomenon of length contraction is therefore an artifact of rotating an object in this unified view of space and time, spacetime. We see the three-dimensional shadows of what are really four-dimensional objects. The rocket's length in spacetime does not change. An object's spacetime length always equals its proper length. So according to relativity and this space-time view, when the rocket is at rest it uses all of its length to reach through space. But when accelerated, it uses some of its length to reach through time. This suggests that space and time are measures of the same thing. All physical objects that reach through space, when in motion, reach through time. Time is just another dimension of space, like width, height, and depth. It is the fourth dimension. This is why physicists created the word spacetime. Rather than treat time and space separately it embodies the unified whole. Quote. The views of space and time which I wish to lay before you have sprung from the soil of experimental physics, and therein lies their strength. They are radical. Henceforth, space by itself, and time by itself, are doomed to fade away into mere shadows, and only a kind of union of the two will preserve an independent reality. End quote. Einstein's Professor Hermann Minkowski, in Space and Time, 1909. Spacetime and Twins This spacetime model not only provides an intuitive understanding of length contraction, but also explains time dilation and the twin paradox. Take for example, the case of two twins, Sam and Pam. Sam stays on Earth for 10 years while his sister Pam travels to the star Proxima Centauri and back at 80% the speed of light. Sam remains on Earth and uses all of his speed to travel through time. Pam travels at 80% the speed of light to reach Proxima Centauri 4 light years away. The trip there takes 5 years from Sam's point of view, but only 3 from Pam's point of view. The proper length of both Sam's and Pam's paths through spacetime is 10 light years, but because Pam used 80% of her speed to travel through space, she could only use 60% of her speed to travel through time. So while Sam aged 10 years, Pam aged only 6. While observers may disagree on distances in space, or distances in time, all observers agree on distances through spacetime. 
Like the speed of light, spacetime lengths are absolute. Clock desynchronization. The rotation of objects in four dimensions suggests an entirely new phenomenon, clock desynchronization. Clock desynchronization is different from time dilation. Clock desynchronization is the effect where two clocks that agree when at rest, will disagree on the time when they move. This applies even when the clocks move together. For example, when on the same rocket. But when the rocket comes to a halt, the two clocks will once again agree on the time. For example, two clocks, one at the front, and the other in the rear of a rocket agree on time when the rocket is at rest. When moving, however, the clock in the rear will run ahead of the clock at the front. If either clock is brought to the location of the other in the direction of motion, the clocks will agree, but when separated along the direction of motion they disagree. Each end of the rocket is in a different time, and of a different age. The rocket really does reach through time. In the case of clock desynchronization, rulers can measure time, and clocks can measure lengths. It is another confirmation that time and space are made of the same stuff and are units of the same thing. When converting units of space and time, such as when measuring distances in spacetime, the conversion is straightforward, one light year is one year, one light second is one second, 3.33 microseconds is one kilometer, and one nanosecond is about one foot. You could say that when an object seems to be at rest, in actuality it is traveling through time at the speed of light. Quote. Why can't you travel faster than light? The reason you can't go faster than the speed of light is that you can't go slower. There is only one speed. Everything, including you, is always moving at the speed of light. How can you be moving if you are at rest in a chair? You are moving through time. End quote. Lewis Carroll Epstein, in Relativity Visualized, 1981.